courses I do. My name is Kostika Masakam and I will be presenting about the introduction of our case study. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, more commonly known by its acronym OSHA, is responsible for protecting workers' health and safety in Malaysia. This act is a practical tool superimposed on existing safety and health logistics. An accident is described as an anticipated, undesired, unexpected, and uncontrollable incident. An accident does not always result in harm. The rising incidence of construction-related fatalities and injuries is concerning right now. In 2018, the industry had the greatest number of fatalities of any economic sector in the country. In Malaysia, there has been 199 construction accidents or as of October 2020. The number of construction accidents in Malaysia was fewer than the previous year owing the numerous building projects being halted because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The case that we are going to talk about is the Sungai Besi Ulu Kelang Elevated Accident. A very good day I've been to Sir Saidi, our lecturer for BJN 292. My name is Jocelyn Janet Aholis and now I'm going to present the case elaboration of our case study that we chose. On 22 March 2021, there was a gantry crane falls from a building site along Suke, which is the Sungai Besi Ulu Klang Elevated Expressway located near Puncak Banyan Ceras. Police have stated that there were six victims in this incident. Three of the victims are the foreign workers from China. The other one is local driver who was seriously injured. Meanwhile, the other two victims were rescued. The three foreign workers have been identified as Ding Kun Fu, Jiang Jin Bo, and Mu Tong Zeng. Ding and Jiang died after falling from a height of 36.6 meters during maintaining the track. Mu was alleged to have died later after he fell and was trapped between the tracks under construction. Therefore, the efforts to retrieve Mu's body took a while. A driver, a 33 years old local, was driving a Produa Beza when the Genty crane slammed onto his car and crushing it. He was said to have been critically injured. According to Cheras Police Chief Assistant Commissioner, Mohamed Moksin Mohamed Zon, the incident has been investigated under Section 43 Subsection 1 of the Road Transport Act 1987. The holder of the highway concession, Project Lintasan Kota Holdings, Sendiran Barhat, known as Prolintas, stated that the incident was caused by a component of the gantry falling off. The incident was reported to the Kuala Lupo Fire and Rescue Department, known as JPBM, at 8.45 a.m. and 25 firefighters from Cheras, Tun Raza, and Hang Tua were dispatched to the scene. Meanwhile, police were still on the scene to keep an eye on the situation. According to the Suke spokesperson, the JPBM and their emergency response team have closed the incident area in both directions and emergency rescue procedures are still ongoing. The process to remove the gantry crane is such a difficult process. It is because before the gantry crane is taken down, it must first be cut into several parts. Therefore, in this case, it took a week to completely removing it. They need to make sure that the scene's recovery, diversions, and restoration work was done professionally and safely. Lastly, Prolintas and Suke will completely cooperate in determining the true cause of the incident. Any future action will be dependent on the results of the authority's investigation. That is all for the case elaboration. Thank you. Hi, my name is Magdalene Martin and I will present the possible causes and faults. So with workers working at heights and using heavy machinery, it is certainly not surprising that construction work is risky. After reviewing a bit about this case, there are several causes several possible causes led to this accident. Among them are because of the excessive weight of the load. In the case report, it said that the gantry crane fell and smashed a car. This may be due to the crane not being able to accommodate the load that needs to be moved. Second, improper crane installation. If the crane doesn't have the right wooden or metal locking supports to ensure the stability of the load carried by the crane, the load can move and cause the crane to fall. Third, improper training of workers. Crane operators must be 
properly trained in crane handling and require a complete OSHA course in proper crane operation. Next, hasty construction work. Quick and sloppy crane inspections may be driven by employers rushing to complete a construction project. Uh, improper in maintenance causes the crane to not be able to function as stably as it should. Um, next, mechanical failure. Cranes must be kept up routinely to dodge mishaps caused by mechanical dam damage. Also, the possible causes of this accident is due to contact with power lines. For example, the power to the, to the electrical line is not closed before work begins near a direct wire. Last but not least, the lack of standard guidelines. SOP, we know that construction sites are places with high risk of accident, but in this case, uh, they provide access to public through construction sites. If they follow the SOP fully, even if the gantry crane falls, but at least no local were involved in the accident. So from this, we can see that SOP are very important to take seriously. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Farah Nadia Binti Razali. In this group assignment, I will present my part, precautions, and subject. According to the case we studied, the accident was caused in part by a failure to follow crane safety procedure. Listed few precautions that should be taken to avoid crane accident at construction site. The first step is to make sure that the entire crane has a regular inspection. It is essential to verify the operational activity daily to guarantee that all functionality functionality is working efficiently. The second one is complete a plan. Instead, every leaf is distinctive. Thus, it is important to truly analyze potential hazard, load weight, capacities, equipment condition, potential wind impacts, and other variables. The third one is know your radius when you're working with cranes. It is necessary to determine a control zone for individuals who are permitted to work in a close vicinity. Make sure that no objects from the site fall outside the border. Next, communication. The operator and the other staff must communicate well whether you use various approaches such as hand signal or air horns. This is particularly important whenever a crane is doing lifting. Make sure that everyone understands and follows the system. And the last one is choose the appropriate crane for the job. Choosing the right crane is the first step in ensuring safe crane operation. Cranes can be movable or static, with fixed crane being employed in industrial setting or on complicated or tall building project. Any accident might be preventable if employers follow crane safety rules. Here, I will share a few safe use of crane according to the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. 1. Written approval to install the crane was acquired from the regional department before its installation on the building site. The crane has approved machinery that must be used with a current certificate of fitness. 2. A detailed plan must be prepared and followed for the crane safety. Self operation, lifting, hoisting, jacking, and dismantling, taking into consideration its closeness to the public roadway, surrounding buildings, and other properties. 3. After each grant's erection and installation, the computer firm shall conduct a comprehensive and examination of the grant, document the observation, and safety records for the authority attention when required. 4. Operation of the crane only permitted to the licensed crane operators. The operator should be given special attention and assistance if the operator is unfamiliar with the type or model of crane he is operating. 5. Before start every lifting activity, the crane operator must perform a pre-use inspection to determine that the crane structure and mechanism have not deteriorated, been damaged or deformed, and are safe to use. 
6. Following every crane modification or repair, or the occurrence of the hazardous incident on the crane, the competent firm must perform an additional comprehensive evaluation. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today I'm going to explain about corrective measure. To prevent the same thing from happening, the best solution to prevent crane collapse is strictly on crane operation by giving qualified workers for doing a crane operation. Next, labeling crane load limit as to prevent overloading or and potential collapse. Moreover, giving a training to employers about the crane clearance because we need to make sure the surrounding of the crane need to be cleared and each of the crane need to have 360 degree of cleared space around it. Lastly, providing safety walkways around crane because to prevent dangerous accident when the workers workers is walking in the uh, in the crane operation areas. That's all for me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. My name is Denku Nur Hidayah and I will be presenting the conclusion for this project. The construction industry is one of the most essential aspects of all countries' economies. This industry requires a lot of workforces needed to make a project work, so the industry is also among the most hazardous around the world. With such a high number of workers needed, coupled with the high rate of accidents occurring, the possibility of something going wrong on site is very real. The most common occurrences of construction-related fatalities are falls, struck by heavy objects, electrocution, and struck between objects. Several other safety hazards include working at a high-level heights and in tight spaces, as well as exposure to electricity and construction machineries. These pose a real danger and threat to workers' health if safety measures are not taken seriously during construction. Even though a lot of effort have been done to improve the safety performances, the construction industry still manages to fall behind most of other industries in terms of safety measures. Construction workers are three times more likely to be killed or wounded than employees in other occupations around the world. Several prevention measures can be taken to lessen or avoid these incidents from happening. So mainly, focus should be put on the workers, workplace, materials, equipment, and organizations. Once these factors are taken care of and proper safety precautions are taken seriously, the rate of accidents happening can be decreased significantly. Construction work should be encouraged to compare the safety practices to those of other industries. It should be noted that failures can teach a lot through the implementation of accident investigation procedures that reveals the causes of the accidents. Construction safety has become a global issue ever since technological advances have been made throughout the years. Since construction safety issues are quite similar across countries, they may be brought up to be resolved on a worldwide basis. That's all from me. Thank you very much.